designed to encourage, empower, and educate real estate professionals by sharing best practices from business leaders that are proven winners. I'm your host, Kyle Malnati, and this is Calibrate Real Estate. Broadcasting from the Mile High City, thank you for tuning in to the Calibrate Real Estate Podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Malnati, and this is the podcast designed for you, real estate professionals, and we're here to encourage, empower, and educate. Well, we've got an installment, number four actually, of a real estate conference that Calibrate Real Estate hosted a little while ago, and uh, our MC, Amy Campbell, has become a good friend. She's with Keller Williams here in Denver. She introduces Jared Lofton, who's also become a good friend. I met Jared two years ago, and I had to basically uh, rent a snorkel for my vehicle because Houston was getting flooded so bad the day that I was there, which unfortunately has happened yet again uh, in recent in the recent uh, past here. So, um, but Jared's a good buddy. He's a resilient guy. He'll talk about Houston and some of the ups and downs of being a real estate agent in an area that does get a lot of rain. And uh, this is a, an important conversation. Jared and I are um, kindred spirits in that we both love real estate. We both love finance and Jared's going to talk about budgeting and planning for retirement. So if you're watching on YouTube, you'll actually get to see Jared's slides. There will be links in our podcast notes so that you can go to our website if you want to actually save those slides. And if you're tuning in on iTunes, this may be one of those types of episodes that you want to check out YouTube after you listen to it. And you may want to listen to it again and again as Jared sets things up for how you do a monthly budget as a realtor. Doing a budget is looking out the windshield of the car, not through the rear view mirror. And if you think about life that way, you're looking forward, not backward. Looking backward is helpful as you start to analyze how your profit and loss statement works, what your income is and what your outgo is, your expenses that is. And, uh, but at the same time, budgeting, planning for what you're going to spend is, is a very important exercise. My wife, Courtney, and I have been budgeting month by month for over four years when we joined a class called Financial Peace University. And that's been a, a real foundational element to our marriage. Well, Jared's also going to talk about how real estate professionals can plan for retirement. We're in one of those industries, and I know our world is going this way anyways, but we're in one of those industries that doesn't have pensions or retirement plans. You've got to basically do it all on your own. So Jared's going to talk to you about how to do just those two simple things, to budget on a monthly basis and then also plan for your retirement. Well, I want to make sure that you know that Jared's qualified to talk to you about this information. Jared worked for Merrill Lynch prior to going back to get his graduate degree, his MBA, after he did his undergrad. So he spent two years with Merrill Lynch in between his undergrad and his graduate studies. He's a very smart guy. And at the same time, I do need to give the disclaimer that you should really seek out a professional that would, can help you with your financial planning. There are all sorts of different designations in the financial planning world. And most importantly, whenever you hire a consultant, whether it be a real estate agent, as you know, we're, a lot of us are real estate professionals listening to this podcast, or if you're hiring someone to help you with your finances or your accounting, you're going to want to hire someone that's got the heart of a teacher. Translation, that means they're not the heart of a salesman. They're not going to try to push you into something you don't want or can't understand. And they're going to be willing to train you how to understand that, at least at a surface level. Um, so I, I love that idea of the heart of a teacher. Well, back to Jared Lofton. Jared's going to discuss how to just handle our finances, which is a great discussion about intentionality. One of my favorite phrases that he uses in this, uh, in this recording is the term bust out, which is the way that he refers to a deal that terminates a contract that goes awry and the buyer and seller can't agree and somehow the deal falls apart. But I'd never heard until uh, I heard Jared's presentation, I'd never heard that term bust out before. So enjoy this episode. Thanks again for tuning into the Calibrate Real Estate Podcast. Please leave us a review, five stars if you will, on iTunes and on YouTube. Thanks so much for your subscription. We'll see you around the neighborhood.
Jared is a broker owner of Lofton Realty in Houston, Texas, which he started in 2008. And he also owns Love Moving Company. Jared became the first in his family to graduate college and earned a bachelor's degree in finance from Southern University and an MBA from Texas Southern University. So here to help us with our finances, give a warm welcome to Jared Lofton. Good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, I think we're going to start um, with my 30 second TV commercial that I started whenever I began in a real estate business. I started with Keller Williams Realty. A lot of you all have uh, joined this great firm. Uh, but two years after I started at Keller Williams was the day that I started my own company. Uh, so we're going to start my 30 second TV commercial that I, that I run and was running at the time in the Houston, Texas market. And then I'll get into creating a budget and maximizing each client and planning for retirement. I know a lot of you all make a ton of money, uh, but the key is to figure out how do you allocate those funds and that money uh, to make sure you have a good retirement where you can buy the boat, the yacht, the house, uh, and how do you get there from a daily perspective. So we'll start with the 30-second Lofton Realty TV commercial. Uh, and I think it's queued up, thank you. Hi, I'm Jared Lofton from Keller Williams Realty, and I've created a simple three-step process to selling or buying your home. First, call and set up a free consultation to determine your needs and goals. Next, every real estate transaction is built on solid market analysis. Finally, finding a perfect home and negotiating on your behalf the best deal. Call Jared, 281-773-7904. Call Zeus Mortgage for a free instant decision on your home loan. Don't use that mortgage company. <laughs> so the reason I wanted to start with that video uh, is because I want to show you consistency. If you call that number right now, 12 years later, it's still my cell phone number, right? And so consistency is the key to this business. Uh, but I wanted to give you all a warm welcome and a round of applause for being here, because all of you all look amazing. So first of all, give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> Secondly, I'd like to thank Kyle uh, for all his hard work and dedication. Uh, he's really a visionary and brilliant and ahead of his time. So I would like to give him a round of applause, if you all don't mind. Thank you. And so now I'm going to get into my slides. Creating a budget in real estate, um, that's the key here. How do you manage each particular client that may come to your uh, sphere influence? And how do you turn that one client into $100,000 over a lifetime, all the way up into a million dollars? And the second part of my uh, presentation is going to get into planning for retirement. I personally... Uh, was a financial planner with Merrill Lynch for a couple years. That was my first job before I attended business school. At that time, you needed two years of business school before you can even get into any MBA program. Now it's almost, you can order it online and go to McDonald's to pick it up. Uh, but the key is following your passion. Uh, I think that if you find your passion, you never work a day in your life. Uh, after listening to James Nillis earlier this morning, I think his passion is to be a comedian. And so planning for your retirement and budgeting. It'll take a second. I'm the guy with the clicker, so that's why we haven't gotten to the next slide. OK, so this is something that I created along with my colleagues at Keller Williams whenever I first got into the business. Keep in mind, I'm a small boutique firm with under five agents. I have a moving company and an insurance company. and so. One of the things that I tried to do is create a one-stop shop. Um, and the way that you do that is by having systems for buyers and sellers that, uh, and you follow the models. So this is something that I created. And going out on your own is very, very challenging. I would say that a lot of you all, I would love to see you all open up your own brokerage firm. One of the things that I learned at Keller Williams is Gary Keller, I still consider him my mentor, even though I haven't met him to this day. But the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book, that really changed my life. Uh, and that's my Bible. I go to it on a daily, consistent basis. I believe working for yourself is the hardest thing that you can do. Uh, 
but it's also the most rewarding thing that you can do. And so I had to create this budget or this Excel spreadsheet, whereas in the top what you do is if you want to make $300,000, originally when I started putting this together, Kyle said, take the $150,000 off because I'm pretty sure everybody in this room makes above $300,000. I said, okay, that's pretty good. A quarter of a million dollars. So we all are blessed to be in a business that we love and to be doing something that we love. I remember when I was in high school, I thought I was going to the NBA. Uh, obviously, I got an MBA, so I was off by one letter. <laughs> yeah, I was off by one letter, but I found my passion, and I think that's the most important thing is to find your passion, uh, finance guy, and so it's being able to track what do you actually want to do. So you see here at the top, uh, and Kyle will be able to give you guys these slides later. If you would like to make $300,000 a year, which as we were told, all of you all are making $300,000 a year. Um, pretty much what it says is here, you have a percentage of income, listings, sales, and sold equal 100%. With this Excel spreadsheet, it shows you that 60% of your uh, sales should come from listings and 40% should come from buyers. Then you have the annual income, which should equal $300,000. Originally, when we put the slide together, I personally have a five-year to 20, uh, 2015 to the year 2020 slide that I wanted to make $1.8 million. I'm a little bit off on that number, but I'm in Houston, Texas. We just went through Hurricane Harvey. That definitely has affected our business. I've been through two uh, downturns in the oil and gas industry. Uh, so one of the things that I do is I track and I follow the price of oil. When oil was at $170, I was selling everything. Then it dropped to $40 a barrel. All of my friends got laid off. It didn't matter who you knew. And you know, so then when you go through that, home sit on the market and you have to reinvent yourself. What I did in that time was I started a moving company, Love Moving Company. We love to move so you don't have to. And having that slogan with Lofton Realty, think Lofton often for all your real estate needs. It's pretty catchy. But I came up with it in a group just like this, uh, and somebody gave me that, that slogan. So the key that I want to drive home is being consistent and staying in front of your customers and your clients. With this slide, it tells me the average sales price needs to be $400,000 to $250,000 on the buyer side. Average commission, 3%. Average commission, dollars, $12,000, $7,500. Agent share commission, 100%. Then it goes down to the annual number of units closed. Pretty much it's telling you that you need to close 31 units, percentage that actually closed. This factors in how many deals are going to possibly bust out. Uh, we've all had a deal that busts out, right? And still busting out. Uh, but the key is it factors in at 80%. And so as you look at the number of units that you have to take, uh, it pretty much breaks down the monthly units that you have to take in the closed volume. So in order to get to $300,000 per year, you have to close 31 combined units, and that's going to equal $10 million in volume. Uh, the next slide. So the next slide breaks down your marketing plan. At the top, assumption is four appointments equal one sale. Uh, appointments per year. And this is really huge when you have a small boutique firm. Uh, and like I said, I started with Keller Williams, so I consider it to be one of the top firms in, in the country and in the world. Uh, but as I was transitioning from Keller Williams to Lofton Realty, uh, I, had, I knew that I needed all the tools that they had, and I didn't have all of the time. But I needed the strategies in order to implement this to go out on my own. Of course, I was afraid. Uh, being the first in my family, as they mentioned, they graduated from college um, from a town called New Orleans, Louisiana, originally. Um, and so a lot of my friends either was killed or went to jail, some of them, let me say that. And so I always knew that I wanted to do something different for my life. Uh, I grew up in a single mother home uh, with three kids. I had an amazing stepdaddy. Uh, but a lot of my friends were making bad choices. I mean, they would go to jail and go back like five times. And so I always knew through academics and sports that, you know, I wanted something different for my life. And so it's always been about learning every single day and building relationships with great people. Uh, and so what happens is 
These are the formulas that I implement as a small boutique, boutique firm, excuse me. Appointments per year. I need 124 appointments per year in order to make that $300,000. Appointments per month. I need 10 appointments per month. Appointments per week, three. And appointments per day. Uh, the assumption here is that 25 contacts equal one appointment. Last night at the networking event, I met, I tried to meet everybody. I still have probably 25, 30 more people that I need to meet, but a few of you all did not have your business card. I made that mistake probably eight years ago. I remember I was at an event and I didn't have my business card. I do not leave my house without my business cards. And I try to give out 10 to 25 cards a day, but I also try to collect people's business cards because they go into my top producer. As it currently sits, I have probably 10,000 contacts in Top Producer and another 10,000 in LinkedIn. So when I'm working on something, I have three screens. I'm currently adding people on LinkedIn as I may be working on something. And I plan to start marketing to those 10,000 people in the coming months. 10,000 was my goal when I started the new year. Uh, and that's a lot of contacts and a lot of people who can bring you potential business. And so. We look at 25 contacts equal one appointment, contacts per year, 3,100 contacts, contacts per month, 258, contacts per week, 65 contacts per week, contacts per day. I need 13 contacts per day. So if I'm at a networking event, and I try to go to networking events uh, a couple times a week, but the goal is to give them, uh, well, the goal is to collect their card, but to also give them mine. But whenever I collect their card, I'm trying to create that customer for life because I'm going to stay in front of them. That 10,000 people that's in my database, I send out a mass email at least once or twice a month. Uh, and so that has been very helpful. Whenever you have a small boutique firm, you have to do things that the big firms are not doing to keep that small contact and stay in front of the customer. So the next thing, we go to the type of contacts. This is pretty much how you break down your effort. 3%, that's off, uh, comes from referrals. 18% mail in the contacts, 15% uh, uh, from internet advertising, 10,000 po postcards a month. If some of y'all have met me in the uh, Chicago area three years ago, I have this big colorful postcard uh, that I usually give out, and I've been giving those out for the last 10 years, and I try to give out 5,000 of those a month. Even if I'm walking down the street or at uh, Whole Foods, I'll put them on your car. It don't matter what time it is. It's going on your window because I'm making sure I'm getting my contacts, right? And so the key is to stay in front of people. Uh, and that's one thing that I try to focus on. And once again, I'm not the big Keller Williams or Long and Foster, all of these big companies. When you're a small boutique firm, you have to think outside the box and work outside the box as well. Now... All of this should equal 100% as far as effort, where you're getting your referrals from, where there's advertising. Uh, recently this year, I've, I've done a radio cat, campaign in advertising. And so I try a lot of different things, whether it's TV, radio, you know, even that TV commercial that we started with. I remember the people at Keller Williams, and I use Keller Williams' office to do it. And they're looking at me like, who does this young guy think he is? You know, creating a, a TV commercial. Keller Williams didn't even have a TV commercial at that time, you know, and so then over time you start seeing that they're advertising and doing uh, TV commercials as well. So this breaks down everything from per year, per month, per week, per day, how many touches you need to have in order to hit that goal. The great thing about this Excel spreadsheet is if I only wanted to make $150,000, you just go to the front of that slide. Uh, and you put the $150,000 in the top, and it, uh, it fills everything out for you on the marketing plan as well as the marketing budget. Here, this is the marketing allocation. As I mentioned, I originally created this to be a five-year plan from 2015 to 2020, where I have this big, hairy, audacious goal that Kyle taught me uh, to make $1.8 million. I mean, we all can live off $1.8 million, right? So I started either scaling it back or increasing, but for the presentation, we made it to $300,000. What this plan right here shows, and my good friend from Goldman Sachs uh, 
help me put this together. Uh, basically, what it says is your total revenue of $1.8 million, it breaks down your marketing dollars all the way down to the, the cent and uh, the penny on how much money do you need to allocate in order to hit $1.8 million. As you can see, in 12 months, we have $365,000. $24,000 is the cost of the marketing plan minus the revenue from the marketing. And it breaks it all the way down from the month, the week, per day, and the cost per revenue. And so as you can see, the more money that you make, you should be putting it into your marketing. I think all of our strategists are kind of spend a third of your money on marketing. With this particular plan, if it's executed the way that it shows in Excel spreadsheet, is you only need 7.76% uh, to be allocated towards your marketing. Now, profit and loss, uh, these are not all of my numbers for the most part, and we created a lot of whole numbers just so you all can see this. But so the next slide, it shows what is your profit and loss and how do you track it. And so whenever you uh, are a CPA or an accountant, this helps whenever you go to do your taxes because it breaks down what are your fixed expenses, what are your variable expenses. Um, and so right here you can see it has your fixed expenses, office rent, office cell phone, internet, car payment, car insurance, salaries, e &O insurance, taxes, and all of your variable expenses, printing, business cards, open house copies, postage, radio commercials, gas, supplies. And as this list increases, you want to add to uh, your spreadsheet, but it's a lot easier once you have the formula for it. Then it'll go in and break down what is your totally monthly expenses, what are your commissions, how much did you make per quarter, uh, and it gives you a, a good way to track what is your performance been for that particular year and try to forecast out for the next uh, coming years. Now, we're going to switch over to my retirement plan, which is very important to me. Uh, I have a color uh, on my desk, color Excel spreadsheet. I probably have three or four of these in my office, home, car. You know why? Because I want to know what that number is every single day that I need to hit in order to retire at a certain amount of time. And the first part is coming up with the income. Me and my best friend, uh, Stephen Hoy, who works with Saudi Aramco, one of the top oil and gas companies in the, the world, uh, he's a millionaire already, 1.9 million cash. And so we created this spreadsheet around the time when we were in our early 30s. Uh, he's a great guy and, and very sharp and smart. And so the key to the spreadsheet was in 2010, we just kept it real conservative to make $100,000 per year. And as you can see, $100,000 per year on a salary, we contributed $7,000 a year to our IRA, and then additional savings of $25,000 total invested at that time was $34,000. And so our cumulative nest egg at 31 years old was $57,000. And so in 2015, that's the reason why I look at this every day, is because all I had to make was $144,000. Around that time in 2015, the oil and gas prices was at $120 a barrel, $140 a barrel, and I was killing it. Um, and we call it, me and my friend who's in commercial real estate, you suffer from I made it itis, right? You think you made it. Nothing's gonna, you know, throw you off your track. And then the oil market crashed in Houston, Texas. And so you have to reevaluate everything. But what I did was when everybody was out buying Bentleys, I bought a fourplex, right? And so this fourplex was $200,000. Uh, it's bringing in about $4,500 a month. So with that fourplex, I'm already making, you know, $45,000 per year, or actually $60,000, close to that, but I only have to make really $100,000 a year. And so when the market crashed, everybody was losing their homes, losing their cars, but I also had the residual income. That same fourplex today in Houston, Texas is worth $500,000. And so when you look at the 2015 gold, 
I was right, I'm, I'm right on track. If you think about the equity that I have in that property, uh, and around that time on last year, well, in 36, I purchased a duplex. I like duplexes, fourplexes. You get two houses for the price of one. And so that's always been my strategy. When I started at 21 years old, I bought my first house uh, in New Orleans close to the, the, the river. And it's called a Bywater District close to the French Quarter. I bought that house, $110,000. I did not like my realtor. That's how I got into real estate. But it was an amazing purchase. It was three bedrooms, two baths on each side. New Orleans has a lot of these duplex homes. And so when I made that first purchase, whenever I hit 31 years old, I sold it. And so I made my first $100,000 then. And so now it's worth $400,000. But that $100,000 to me, I thought I made it, right? Suffering from I made it itis. I made it itis. You have a big, you know, closing, and you don't work for another two months. You're traveling a little bit. You're not getting up early in the morning, going to the gym like you, you know, once was to even get to that point. So don't suffer from I made it itis. Um, and so in the year 2020, as is currently projected, if I continue to be consistent, don't suffer from I made it itis, uh, it says that I need to make $202,000 uh, $230.51 gross income. And so you continue to invest in your Roth RA. You continue to have your additional savings that you started with, which was $25,000. And so, you know, when you get to your total amount invested plus the cash and equity that you have, by the year 2020, you should have $805,000. It's all compound interest, right? And so, you know, if you're a finance major, that's one thing that, that they teach you. A dollar invested today is worth more than a dollar invested five years from now because you're actually putting that dollar to work. And so that's the most important thing, compound interest and getting started when you are young uh, because that's how the money doubles and triples. And so as you look in the year 2025, it says that, you know, 283000 is what is needed to be made. Uh, just to go back, between 2015 and 2020, I purchased a duplex in the Galveston, Texas market. You can't fish when every, where everybody else is fishing. And so I started thinking, everybody in Houston, it's the fourth largest city in America, oil and gas capital of the world, largest medical center in the world. Everybody's there looking for real estate all day. I took a day and I went to Galveston and started looking for deals. I found this one house, it was $110,000 duplex. And so when I drove back to Houston, it was already in a contract. I called the realtor, I said, hey, I'm really interested in this house. In my dream last night, uh, it, it, it really touched me that this home should be mine. She said, it's already on the contract, Jared. The next week I went to check and that deal busted out. So lo and behold, I was able to get the home on the contract. I bought the home for $110,000. I sold it in December for $210,000. Once again, I suffer from I made it itis. Uh, you know, you got $100,000 in December, you're thinking, but you can't suffer from I made it itis. You got to keep your foot on the ground and on the pedal and continue to hit these goals, continue to make contacts, continue to take people to coffee, and stay focused on your goals and building good relationships. So as you can see, the reason I look at this chart on a daily basis is because if I'm healthy in the year 2039, I should have $14 million. And that's a lot of money, right? $14 million. And I also want to say I believe that somebody in this group is going to become one of the 400 richest people in the world. I believe we have somebody in this group. I don't know who it's going to be, but I challenge you to figure out which one of you can take it to that level. And so $14 million by the time I'm 60, I feel like I can live off of that. Now, one thing that I will say is sacrifice brings prosperity. I spend $5 a day for lunch unless I'm taking a client to lunch, meaning I either cook at home or I go to Subway, give me the sub, I have my Doritos at home, bring some water. So I'm very frugal, right, because I'm focused on the long term. You know, and I have friends that have Bentleys and nice homes and at the end of the day, it's about the sacrifice. So are you willing to put the sacrifices in today so you can have the life that you want tomorrow? 
And so that $5 is very important. But once again, by the time I'm 60, God willing, if I'm healthy and alive, $14 million is the number that I should be looking at if I can continue to hit these targets. In 2012, uh, we went in and looked at what were some of my personal goals. I wanted to make $1,000 per day. I have a moving business, and so $1,000 per day, $500 on a moving job, $500 in real estate. Sometimes I might make $15,000 in real estate in a day. I only wanted to make $1,000. i am thankful for the extra fourteen, dollars but we still put it to the side and continue to focus on the goals. Next thing, work out six days, three to four, six days a week. Health equals wealth. To me, I start most of my mornings in the gym. Uh, if anybody want to run with me in the morning, I'll be up for it. But health equals wealth. In order for me to get to that $14 million in 60 years, I have to be putting into my uh, paying it forward with the health, right? And so I have to be healthy in order to have a chance to enjoy that money. Otherwise, my $5 a day on lunch, all of that sacrifice, you know, will, I won't last or be able to enjoy it. Marketing my speaking business, I enjoy speaking and talking to college students and high school students. Uh, I can currently mentor probably five or ten people uh, within the Houston area and around the country. And I send a lot of my money to Jamaica uh, because they're really poor and impoverished. You know, I have some community stuff that I do in Houston, but it's really the people in India, Jamaica, uh, that are really poor, China. So figure out a way to, to help those people as well because a lot of them don't even have a meal to eat whenever they go to sleep. Aggressively go after my corporate real estate and moving business. Uh, I'm starting to get into commercial real estate. I try to read one book a month. I must have $100,000 saved by the end of 2012. Learn commercial real estate. That's why me and Carla are best friends. Uh, figure out how the oil and gas business works and fill out my Lofton Realty Foundation and nonprofit paperwork. So these are some of the goals that I make for myself. But once again, health equals wealth. Try to keep your goals where they're obtainable, and don't pat yourself on the back too much, but continue to work towards it. As I mentioned, $1,000 a day for me is what the goal is. I may sell a house and make $5,000, I just wanted the 1000 and so everything else is laying you up on top of that. $1,000 a day is 365 days in a year. I actually like to count 366 for that leap year. So $366,000, who can't live off $366,000 spending $5 a day on lunch? That's my time. I thank you all so much for giving me the opportunity. <laughs>